Uh, welcome to theCUBE's presentation of Unstoppable Domains Partner Showcase. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in Palo Alto. We've got some great guests here on this panel talking about DeFi, the relevance of it, the importance, and all the major things happening in the changing world of finance and decentralized web, which is Web3. Great wave here going on. We've got uh, Jamie Roginski, founder of Wall Street Bets and strategic advisor of the Wall Street Bets app. Great to have you on. We've got Michael So, partner, head of business development, Cook Finance, and Mike Morlitz, CEO of Dehive. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. I'm super excited about this uh, panel conversation here in the Unstoppable Domains Partner Showcase. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Thanks so, for having us so first of all, it's been a crazy ride. If you go, even just go back from, just go back eight years ago now, and then go to you know, the big ICO craze, you had now the operationalizing of crypto applications, blockchain, obviously the price of Bitcoin has, has been gone great. Everyone's been making a lot of money, but it's really about the fundamental change of users. And DeFi and decentralized finance has been one of the tip of the spears here in terms of change, because money's involved. And that's the, the shift here. So, before we get into it, I, I want to get you guys to help me uh, define what is DeFi. What if someone says, "Hey, what's DeFi?" Everyone wants to know what's DeFi. What does it mean? What is DeFi? Well, I, I think it's still being defined, to be quite honest with you, right? Like it stands for decentralized finance, but for the most part, it's figuring out a way to use these crypto coins, tokens, assets, um, DAOs, DApps, this, that, and the other to try and integrate this worldwide uh, transactional par parallel ecosystem to, to traditional finance, right? Um, so I'd say for the most part, you're able to transact, send money, buy things, invest it, generate interest rates, et cetera. So it's actually a new, is it a new money system? Is it an architecture? How should, how should people think about this? Because you know, to me, it seems like a whole nother stack, if you will, I'm here to use the word stack, tech stack, but it's, it's really more of a different thing. People still scratch their heads. So do I, does it help me? Does it hurt me? What's the, how would you explain it to someone who's like saying, hey, I got a bank, got my app on my phone. What's the difference? Yeah, to me, there are three things that define uh, DeFi. You know, one is the fact that it is non-custodial, meaning uh, there is no counterparties who take hold of your money and decide when they want to release it back to you. You own it, you hold the assets, you know, in your own wallet. You know, that's one uh, clear, uh, you know, defining moment of DeFi. Uh, second is the fact that, you know, where the value of transfer happens. Uh, in TradFi, traditional finance, you know, you would see how uh, the actual transfer may not even happen uh, uh, actually outside of a particular location, such as, for example, a centralized exchange. However, on DeFi, you can clearly see that how the value of transfer happens on chain, on Ethereum, on Avalanche, you know, on, on other uh, chain as well. And third and last, you know, to me is how the organizations define what decisions, what uh, setups are to be made. Uh, within, right? For, for, for example, you know, DAO, you know, the centralized autonomous organization, they will actually uh, uh, actually use the communities to define how things can be decided. So that's one way to see it. You know, it's interesting. As all these protocols and the tokens and the infrastructure, Mike, this is there's a complex system going on here. It's the plumbing, right? I mean, it's a money system. You know, how decisions are made. You got communities involved in there. You got actually mechanisms for immutability and security. You got application developers. So you got to kind of think of like an operating system here to make it all work. What's your take on this whole impact of what is DeFi relative to the what people see on their phones is just an app or just some finance app. There's a lot of stuff going on under the covers. Yeah, uh, I want to totally agree with Michael because uh, it's all about uh, one point of uh, entering uh, to a uh, uh, web free. Yeah, I have just uh, my personal key and can use uh, all my wallets, uh, get access to my funds from different point uh, in the world. And I just have entered to all these uh, applications, all these uh, huge amount of services and monies. Uh, second uh, general part for me that it's all about smart contracts and not intermediates here. Uh, then people want to uh, cooperate uh, on many ways uh, to each other on stable coins, yeah? And uh, this is just smart contract and one person from another side and another person from other side. That's it. It's all about DeFi ecosystem uh, in, 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 in towards. I mean, this idea of disintermediating the middleman is a huge part of this. I mean, why, I mean, smart contracts is critical to this. You got to have the infrastructure. You got to have the user behavior. <laughs> This is why it's important. Can you guys weigh in on some of the things on the importance of, of DeFi and where we are right now relative to progress? Because even just in the past two years, 
uh, the cultural shift of DeFi has changed a lot. Where are we right now in, in DeFi? Can you guys share your perspectives on kind of you know, in progress compared to the evolution of where it will go? So I, I think that DeFi has definitely made a lot of progress in, in, with regards to adoption, not only by retail uh, participants, but also by institutional ones, right? They're warming up to the idea of these first stocks from Bitcoin or whatever, these, these larger ones that have more proven track record, and they're starting to experiment more and more from taking um, crypto transactions, et cetera. But from the retail standpoint, it, it's also made a lot of progress. I'd say the biggest uh, benefit to the, the DeFi world is community, right? It works because it's decentralized, which means one of the requirements is a lot of participants. Uh, but one of the hindrances, which is one of the biggest ones that's kind of been in the way, is the usability, which although it's improved a lot, it's still not ready for the mainstream user that's used to just one click, buy it, whatever, don't don't care to understand how things work. But those, but those two worlds are starting to bridge, right? People getting comfortable, institutions getting comfortable, as well as retail participants not being scared away by the process. Yeah, I mean, that, I would just like just ask you a follow up on that, James, if you don't mind, is that that community user piece is huge. Um, a lot of people in the old guard will dismiss things as meme, meme stocks, if you will. You know, we've seen a lot of the traction, but when you have communities moving at massive forces, that's, that's in a way infrastructure, right? So you have behavior changes where the, you got some peer-to-peer -peer community happening. It can't be dismissed. I mean, yeah, there's some arbitrage and a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, I won't say crypto vandalism or kind of fun, but at the end of the day, that's a behavior, that's a, that is specific change. That points right. to, it can't be dismissed. What do you guys react to that? What's your reaction to that? Right, well, we are actually at my firm, Cook Finance, we are actually at the forefront of uh, seeing that movement. Uh, so at Cook, you know, we label ourselves as composable <laughs> finance. And one thing that we've seen is that our communities uh, consistently would propose very interesting strategies, connecting different DeFi protocols together, uh, to basically execute on a, uh, on, on a portfolio uh, uh, execution that allows them to achieve a certain objectives. Uh, and uh, we have to say, you know, if you were to define Web2 as read and write, and Web3 as read, write, and create, you know, uh, then this is re really, you know, where the difference lies. Uh, we are now at this point where we are simply providing an infrastructure, as you said before, uh, but allowing, you know, the creativities, you know, from everybody to come together uh, and let the mass uh, the, the the crowd wisdom, if you will, you know, to decide exactly, you know, what should take hold uh, from a product perspective. So we're very excited about that. Yeah, and these are new protocols that need to be built. I mean, what does that mean, right? So how does software adapt to that? This comes into the question, I think, why it can't be dismissed. Uh, Jamie, what's your reaction to that? Because you're in, you're in the middle of it. You see all these 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 behaviors in Wall Street. Certainly, is an environment where um, there's a lot of activity because there's finance involved, there's money there, right? And again, a lot of that old, is old, old money, old systems, um, now moving to the new, now global, et cetera. What's your take? Well, I mean, first of all, I don't think that one is going to move over to the other one. I believe there's going to be elements where they coexist, right? Traditional finance still has a lot of merits to it and it has a lot of use of practical applications, but they can feed off of each other. There's a lot of things that DeFi can learn from traditional finance and vice versa. So I think that, that we're just going to start seeing this, this uh, convergence of these two different worlds. Um, and I think it's extremely powerful, right? Because the, the way that you think about uh, trans sequential and transactional uh, systems that are centralized, right? Like it requires all sorts of mechanisms for example i know i'm speaking arbitrary but like you have a market with an exchange in an order book with limit orders and then you have the guy come in there and push market buy or sell pushes the price right that's the mechanism by which you see something flash on your screen uh in the world of DeFi, there's there's additional mechanisms that have that have previously been impossible like automated market makers right they don't have order books and there's no counterparty i mean there is but they're distributed so the risk profile is really different so like it's just it's just a matter of rethinking and looking at all the advantages and all the benefits that um, that DeFi has to offer. I love that whole point there because that's basically refactoring existing markets in the new way. Uh, and this becomes this becomes the next question is is that okay if if you have like say Unstoppable where they got this access with, through an NFT which is super cool it's kind of like a, a, an identity. The development environment is really key in all these big ways because if you think about what needs to happen next is you need more software developers or developers in general on the on this new paradigm, right? So, so with that in mind, how do you guys see the market of 
uh, more innovation being developed on top of where we are now, because that's the next key flywheel in this equation, which is I need simplicity, I got to make ease of use, and make reduce the time it takes to do things, and that's just going to come from development. So what's your guys' reaction to where the wave coming in from a development standpoint? You mentioned smart contracts earlier, Mike. What's your, how do you, what do you guys think? Yeah, um, uh, I'm, uh, at that uh, moment, I am thinking about uh, web-free identity. Uh, it's very close to uh, Unstoppable Domains doing, because uh, they are doing uh, that you can connect uh, by your domain uh, to different uh, apps, to different uh, projects, and so on. And the next step after that will be uh, web-free identity. I think there will be uh, some uh, custodial service when uh, you will put your uh, passport or verification service and you will get uh, uh, NFT uh, identifying your, uh, your identifying your. And then if you, uh, with this uh, NFT, you will go to every service uh, which uh, should be identified. For example, uh, tomorrow uh, SEC will, will create new law about uh, that all users uh, for Uniswap should be identifying and you will uh, using this uh, identity, uh, identity NFT for using this Uniswap. And uh, I think uh, it will be a huge amount of works for all uh, web free uh, applications and uh, all this stuff. Michael, what is, what is uh, what, um, Unstoppable matter? Why, is, why does Unstoppable matter to, to DeFi? What's your take on that? Uh, yeah, yeah. First of all, you know, uh, I have been a big fan of Unstoppable both since day one, you know, from the NFT domain, uh, you know, rollout. Uh, but uh, one thing that I'm super excited about Un Unstoppable is the fact that uh, it provides a digital identity exactly like what Mike said. And the fact that, you know, you can uh, leverage Unstoppable uh, and the, the fact that the digital identity can be used in a different way than where we uh, see the traditional finance today, such as uh, owning all your PII, you know, all the personal identifiable information. You know, uh, the NFT aspect allows you know uh, only certain information to be transferred, uh, but at the same time allow all the participants in the ecosystem, DeFi or even TreFi institutional alike, you know, to only pick certain pieces such that they can still uh, live within you know the uh, existing framework. Uh, so I think that really is powerful. In a way, it bridges, you know, where uh, the existing money or value transfer happens to where in the future, how people can use a different infrastructure to perform the very same actions. Jamie, what's your take on the unstoppable position here relative to DeFi? Look, I, th I think unstoppable is in a really great position, right? The whole uh, I, spirit of DeFi is to removing bottlenecks, right? Removing kind of choke points, which can either be, you know, by, by some people choose to, to label that as the government, but I choose to think of it as more as a technological, right? Like you have this distributed uh, naming system and this, this idea of identifying yourself has uh, uncalculable benefits, right? I don't think we're, we're at the point here where we can just imagine it. Right now, we start off by associating it with, I'm going to sign into a website with my username and password, and this is the new version of that. That doesn't have any huge feel to it right but what what what's under the hood is what actually allows people to do a lot more things such as like being able to port these things across and interconnectivity on different websites and being able to have control over your data right like to actually be able to open up markets for even even being able to monetize your own data right so so that when you sign into a thing you can just decide what things to share and whatnot like there's so much way so many ways that we can't quite yet imagine uh, the use for this, that I think that Unstoppable is in an incredible position to take advantage of that. That's awesome insight. That's a great, great way to talk about it. I mean, you look at a distributed naming system, first of all, it really has not been done at large scale. I mean, the traditional naming systems have been centralized. So if you look at that as an enabling platform, I mean, it's limitless possibilities. Again, you start initially with some problems, but there's real technical enablement here. So in the last few minutes, I'd love to pivot on that point and, and, and go what's possible with this D5 going forward. Because if you take that premise that you have this enabling system that people are going to kind of align with de facto and then ultimately maybe standard, um, what does that enable? Because you're now in a growth mode for the sector. Okay, which is innovation, coders. And when you start seeing protocols start to become de facto, that's a good thing. So let's talk about in the last few minutes, what's next for DeFi. Uh, Jamie, we'll start with you. What's your take on what's next? Cause you kind of teed it up. 
uh, take us through th the take walk down that path. <laughs> I, th I think <laughs> I mean, we, go, we hypothetical, we, of course, but you know, let's take like, take a road. So you know, I, th I think that th for starters, DeFi gets more powerful the more that people use it, right? So we're going to just start by saying there's going to be more adoption, so this thing is going to be more robust, and more things can actually um, live on this decentralized platform. One of the one of the bis biggest benefits of decentralization is its robustness. So you think about like the World Wide Web; it's really not a web; it's more like just like a pipe of data that's owned by a handful of companies and the internet and the servers that host it, all these different things. We're already starting to see decentralized um, uh, storage or servers. We're already starting to see decentralized networks, right? So that you're actually able to slowly start reducing those choke points. You're gonna have this entire system where the world is interconnected, where people can communicate uh, without these choke points, without being able to worry about censorship, you'll be able to uh, have the, the world that's able to transact, interact, and where you live is no longer going to be as much of a factor as it is today. Awesome, Michael, what's your take? What's what's possible? Where's it going? Yeah, I would take what uh, Jamie said earlier, you know, I mean, using the AMM example, the automated market making uh, example. Uh, from our end, you know, I think uh, one of the defining moments was, you know, when U Uniswap first rolled out, you know, in a big way, uh, it allowed many individuals to become market makers for the first time in their lives. Uh, and I think that's very powerful. You know, it changes the dynamic as to uh, where the, I guess, you know, the, the, the forces and the power of finance, you know, lies. Uh, in addition to that, you know, like I said before, uh, I think many people would start to come up with, the, with their own ideas as to how things, you know, can be executed from a finance perspective to achieve many different risk reward profiles. Uh, so from that sense, you know, uh, I think it is only the beginning that now we are seeing how, uh, you know, digital identities, you know, can be linked, you know, to an individual and at the same time, also the value creation side of that story. All right, Mike, your take, yeah. what's next? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe in two things. Uh, first, uh, this is cross-chain and multi-chain uh, liquidity. Uh, because right now, uh, it's not a simple way uh, for transferring, for example, USDC or stablecoin from Polygon to Cosmos network. But uh, I believe in uh, common liquidity for cross-chain. And the second one is uh, more user-friendly uh, interfaces like hybrid uh, interfaces uh, and connecting DeFi and uh, finan traditional financial startups uh, like uh, near ecosystem building now. Then you have layer one blockchain solution and then web two uh, application with, uh, who are connected to one application. More user-friendly and more, um, more common useless uh, applications. Great stuff, guys, amazing content, great panel. You guys are awesome, great on the front, front range of this whole wave. We got one minute left, so quick lightning question. So in, in, in one quick, quick, quick statement, what one thing should people pay attention to in DeFi as we look at the next you know, uh, year or two as we go forward? What are the key innovations? What should people look at? It could be an area that's obvious, it could be an area that's not obvious, that people should look at, pay attention, that's super important, that is the most important area. Mike, we'll start with you and we'll go across. Sure, I would say one thing is composability. Uh, I really uh, am excited about the fact that everyone is starting to generate ideas on their own and simply leveraging the existing DeFi infrastructure to allow that to happen. So that's one thing I would say. Jamie? Sorry, I think NFTs, right? And NFTs, I'm not talking about the JPEGs uh, or, or the pictures. I'm talking about the, the use of these uh, technologies in much the same way that we were talking about being able to identify yourself online or buying actual real estate or whatever it might be. I think that we're, we're unable to imagine what's going to be some of the, the biggest uses. And I'm very, very excited about seeing what's going to happen. Okay, Mike, final statement. What one thing should people pay attention to? Uh, to my mind, uh, you, uh, we don't know what market will be uh, next uh, year. And uh, I will recommend to pay attention for uh, stable strategies, for stable coin uh, projects, for uh, stable rates, and uh, all this uh, stable coin farming uh, uh, sphere uh, of DeFi markets. Guys, thanks so much for uh, sharing your insight on this topic. Really appreciate your time for coming into the cube here in uh, Palo Alto for the Unstoppable Domains Partner Showcase. Really thankful. Thanks for for sharing. Thank you very much. Okay, this is the Cube Conversation here. I'm John Furrier Thank with the Cube. Thanks for watching.